This pre presentation from the Alabama Board of Nursing addresses advanced practice nursing, the standards, the approval process, and the renewal requirements. I'm Charlene Cotton, the advanced practice nurse consultant on staff with the Board of Nursing. You've managed to find our continuing education page in order to log into this program. I want to call your attention to the advanced practice page and the resources that are there for advanced practice nurses. There are several items of general interest to all advanced practice nurses and several additional items that are specific to the collaborative practice of certified registered nurse practitioners and certified nurse midwives. Please sign up for the email distribution list. You can specify only to get advanced practice emails or you can sign up for other uh, topical emails such as continuing education which goes out to providers and chief nursing officers which provides general administrative uh, points of information. The laws and regulations for advanced practice nursing are posted on our website and they're available under the heading for laws. We're going to be talking about the administrative code in addition to the Nurse Practice Act. Article 1 of the Practice Act gives the definition of professional nursing practice. So that definition for registered nurse practice is always our starting point when we talk about advanced practice nursing. Article 5 includes definitions of advanced practice nursing and specific definitions for certified registered nurse anesthetist, certified registered nurse practitioner, certified nurse midwife, and clinical nurse specialist. It also includes regulations for the collaborative practice of physicians with CRNPs and CNMs, which is jointly regulated with the Alabama Board of Medical Examiners. In the administrative code, we find what we refer to as rules or regulations. Chapter 610-X-6 is the standards of nursing practice that apply to all of registered nurses. They include the basic standards, documentation standards, code of conduct, um, and other regulations that are basic to nursing but also impact advanced practice nursing. Chapter 610X5 is the regulations for collaborative practice. This includes more detail than was specified in the statute on collaborative practice, and it is essential that nurse practitioners and nurse midwives take advantage of this information. Chapter 610X9 for advanced practice nursing is specific to nurse anesthetists and clinical nurse specialists. The authorized scope of practice for advanced practice nursing is stated in the Nurse Practice Act and in the two chapters that I've already referred to. In general, the scope of practice addresses delivery of health care services by registered nurses who have acquired advanced nursing education at the graduate level beyond the basic registered nurse education including additional knowledge and skills specific to delivery of nursing care services. It also requires specialty certification in the area for which the advanced practice nurse was educated, and it specifically defines the four roles. The CRNA, by definition, provides performance or assistance in any act involving the determination, preparation, administration and monitoring of any drug used to render an individual insensible to pain for surgical procedures or other therapeutic or diagnostic procedures. The CRNA in Alabama functions under the direction of a physician who is licensed to practice medicine who is immediately available. It does not include practice with a podiatrist. The CRNA may also practice with a dentist who is immediately available. Please note that there is no specific definition of immediately available. Uh, definitions have been attempted, and the more we tried to define it, the more confusion 
came about. So immediately available is not specifically defined, but it does mean the physician has to be immediately available in the practice setting, whether it's rural or a downtown major medical center. The authorized scope of practice for CRNAs is also affected by declaratory rulings for nursing in general. On the Board of Nursing website, in the page for laws, you'll also find a declaratory ruling issued in March of 2010 uh, based on questions submitted by Dr. Sykes. It states that with documented education, training, and experience, the CRNA indeed is authorized to place epidural catheters, brachial plexus catheters, or femoral catheters for anesthetic or analgesic functions, infusions. They may also perform epidural steroid injections as an extension of their capability to place epidural anesthesia and they may perform peripheral nerve blocks. The authorized scope of practice for the clinical nurse specialist identifies the performance of nursing skills by a registered nurse with advanced knowledge and practice skills in a specialized area of practice. It specifies that the clinical nurse specialist may be an independent contractor. However, the law specifically excludes the CNS from performing delegated medical acts or engaging in collaborative practice as it is defined in the law for nurse practitioners and nurse midwives. It does not mean that you can't work with a physician, but the collaborative practice laws for nurse practitioners and midwives have specific requirements that are not placed on the clinical nurse specialist. In addition, the CNS cannot perform any of the functions of the CRNP or the CNM as defined in the law and regulations, and they are not authorized to prescribe drugs of any type. The scope of practice for the certified registered nurse practitioner involves providing advanced practice nursing skills that are consistent with the specialty education and certification. It also provides for consultation, collaborative management, or referral to other providers as indicated by the health status of the client. It does require that this take place in a collaborative practice. It authorizes the nurse practitioner in collaborative practice to perform comprehensive health history and comprehensive physical exams and assessments as may be required in various settings to formulate a working diagnosis, and to implement a treatment plan. It also provides for counseling, teaching, and assisting individuals and families, and for consultation and referral to other providers as appropriate. The CRNP also practices within the standard protocol and formulary adopted by the Board of Nursing and the Board of Medical Examiners. That standard protocol allows the nurse practitioner to prescribe, to administer, and provide therapeutic measures, test, procedures, legend drugs. However, controlled substance medications are regulated separately by the Board of Medical Examiners, and the standard protocol and the standard formulary for nurse practitioner do not include controlled substances in any form. The scope for the certified nurse midwife is defined in a manner very similar to the nurse practitioner to provide advanced nursing skills that are relative to the management of women's health care. Again, within a health care system that provides for consultation and collaborative management and referral as indicated by the health status of the client. As would be expected, the focus for the certified nurse midwife is pregnancy, childbirth, the postpartum care period, care of the newborn, family planning, and gynecological needs of women. Again, there is a standard protocol for the CNM uh, that specifies certain midwifery functions. Again, 
the standard formulary does not include controlled substances. The physician qualify, qualifications for physician in collaborative practice um, state that they must have an unrestricted license to practice medicine in Alabama and they must have at least three years of licensed practice experience. Alternatively, the physician who is board eligible for their specialty certification boards may qualify with board after the Board of Medical Examiners reviews their qualifications and documentation. Pause. <laughs> to keep the lights on. <laughs> The, does that happen during during the board meeting? Mm. Well, I tell you what. If you just wave your arm every time I change slides, okay. All right. Well, I'll. You walk, no, you walk around will not bother me at all, and it may actually give me some intentional. All right. Well, when you aren't used to doing it, but like I said, I've been doing this presentation for 10 years. I'll be able to do it in my sleep. This works for me because having the screen that far away gives me a focal length that is not up here, but in a smaller room, that might be better for sound. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that's a possibility. And, and you could set up some peripheral lights as well.
Yes, sir. This is ready to go again. Advanced practice nursing requires an active, unencumbered registered nurse license at the time that you apply. In addition, education for advanced practice at presently requires a master's or higher degree in advanced practice nursing. We base that on an official transcript of your education and degree and date awarded directly from your university. Exceptions to the graduate degree requirement are nurse anesthetist prior to 1998 when our rules were changed and the nurse practitioner and nurse midwife who were educated and certified prior to 1996. If you fall into either of those two categories, someone on the staff will be happy to walk through uh, the requirements and the alternatives that are available to you. The Board of Nursing requires national certification in the specialty consistent with your education for advanced practice nursing and you see the organizations here listed that we recognize. We do recognize all of the major specialty certification organizations. These organizations do have our address on file and know where to send your certification verification report. We require official verification of advanced practice certification from the certifying agency both for initial certification and we require notice of recertification prior to the expiration date that is on file in our records. You can verify that information on your advanced practice profile and you can access that from the advanced practice page of our website. Verification of certification must come directly to the Board of Nursing from the certifying agency by U.S. mail, by email attachment, or by fax. At this point, most of the agencies are sending it to us by email attachment so that we have a permanent record of when they sent it and when we receive it. All items that are received by mail are date stamped with the day we receive it and that is noted in your application history on our data system. Official verification and primary source verification means that the certificate is not transmitted to the Board of Nursing by the applicant or a third party, but it comes directly from the agency to the Alabama Board of Nursing. National certification must be on record at all times. If your national certification lapses, in our records, then your approval to practice will also lapse. That means that you cannot practice as a nurse practitioner, as a nurse midwife, as a nurse anesthetist, or as a clinical nurse specialist if we do not have on file your current specialty certification. For CNM and nurse anesthetist, there is only a single certifying organization and exam. For nurse practitioners and clinical nurse specialists, there are numerous specialties and there are several organizations that administer either the same test or certain specialty tests. So you can see those listed here that are currently recognized by the Board of Nursing. Again, we require direct notification from the certifying agency without going through the applicant's hands. Clinical nurse specialist certification, there are at present um, more than one organization to certify clinical nurse specialist qualifications and we do accept those. In order to obtain approval to practice as an advanced practice nurse in Alabama, you apply through our online application process. You can access this from the advanced practice page of the website or from the licensing page of our website. From the advanced practice page, you'll see this statement about online applications. 
there is a specific application for the first time applicant who has never had approval to practice in the state of Alabama. If you practiced in Alabama many years ago and aren't sure if you had, for instance, CRNA status or CRNP status several years ago, you can uh, check with our office to verify your history um, so that you will not have to submit the first time application over again. For true first time applications, there is a status check available that will tell you the documents that we've received and the documents that are incomplete on your application. Also notice that here's where you can link the individual advanced practice profile. This will identify for you when the board granted your approval, what the status of your certification is, and for practitioners and midwives specific information about their collaborative practice. For the nurse practitioner and nurse midwife who is a new graduate or who is new to Alabama, the first time application requires a collaborative practice proposal with a physician licensed in Alabama. The application on our website requires that you identify that physician by name. There is a search engine to provide the physician's proper license number the address and license and specialty certification. It's important that you have this information when you sit down to complete the application. Um, you do have to complete the application in one sitting and there's not an option for you to save information and come back to it. You do have to identify proposed practice locations in Alabama and provide the phone number, address, the city, and zip code. The Board of Nursing does not have the prerogative to approve practice sites in surrounding states or other states unless you are employed in a federal agency practicing with a physician who is credentialed in that agency. You do have to identify a starting date and that should be no earlier than the day that you're applying um, but may be in the future. There is an option to include covering physicians for your collaborating physicians. So those would be secondary physicians who routinely cover the medical practice of that physician. Nurse practitioners and midwives should go on to part two of this program for detailed information about advanced practice and collaboration as it is jointly regulated by the Alabama Board of Medical Examiners. When you go into the online application, you're going to log in with your registered nurse license number and the last four digits of your social security number. We have your social security number on file from your original RN license application. If for some reason it does not allow you to log in, be sure that you're using the correct format with a one dash followed by six digits for your RN license number. Validate your name and address and provide an email address where you can receive messages. It is not appropriate for an administrative person to submit the application online for you or for anyone else because there are questions that you as the applicant must personally respond to. Again, the application requires primary source verification so you must notify your university to send a transcript to the Board of Nursing. If you were educated many years ago and your school has closed, uh, check with whatever administrative or educational program may have absorbed those records. A certified nurse anesthetist um, may submit a transcript on file with the Council on uh, Nurse Anesthetist Certification. The certifying agency 
does have to send verification of certification or for new graduates eligibility to test and send that directly to the Alabama Board of Nursing. The certifying agencies do have our address on file. However, if they should indicate that they need an address, send it to the generic email address abn at abn.alabama.gov. For new graduates, there is the option for provisional approval prior to the first attempt on the certification examination. This is available for certified nurse midwives, for nurse anesthetists, and nurse practitioners. It is not available for the clinical nurse specialist. To obtain provisional approval, you must request this in your online application and you cannot practice under provisional approval until you receive written notice from the Alabama Board of Nursing. The provisional requirements include official notice of authorization to test, as I've said, directly to the Board of Nursing from the certifying agency. There is a requirement for supervision by an advanced practice nurse of the same specialty, such as a nurse anesthetist, or by a qualified physician of an appropriate specialty. Provisional approval expires with failure upon the first attempt at the certification exam, and it is not available on subsequent applications. For all applicants, there's always the concern of how long is it going to take to get approval for my practice in Alabama. Again, for first-time applicants, there is a status check available on our website. You can access that from the web page under Advanced Practice Applications. It will tell you if we have received your transcript. We do accept those from secure electronic reporting services that are contracted by the university. We also accept the traditional transcript in a sealed envelope from the university. Again, delivery of the, electron of the certification verification may be either electronic or on paper. And when we receive these documents, as it's posted to your application, then your application will move to the next step in the review process. Well, then the next question is, how will I know when this happened? If you go to the home page, you can go to License Lookup, put in your first and last name if you can't remember your license number, and it will identify the status of your registered nurse license and the additional advanced practice license. If you have a history of a license as a LPN, it will also show you that uh, LPN history. If you have previous registered nurse license history, it will also show if there has been discipline against your license. Approval to practice as an advanced practice nurse is granted after you have satisfied all application requirements, after the board receives official verification of your specialty certification and education, we send written notice from the Board of Nursing to the applicant. Registered nurse anesthetist and clinical nurse specialist will receive a plastic wallet card comparable to the registered nurse card, and it will state that it's valid only with the registered nurse license card. So that also is a reminder that you must maintain your registered nurse license. Your advanced practice approval is going to expire on the same date as your registered nurse license or your, the expiration date of your specialty certification, whichever date occurs first. So for specialties that have a certification period of less than three years, your initial approval may be shorter than your RN license, and it's important that you remember to recertify in your specialty with your national organization as well as request the national organization to notify the Board of Nursing of that. Renewal and maintenance of your advanced practice approval requires that you maintain your national specialty certification without interruption, 
including sent, having notice sent from your agency to the Alabama Board of Nursing. You'll be able to verify that we have received that by looking at your advanced practice profile online. Keep in mind that you must renew your advanced practice nursing status and your RN license every two years. Regular renewal starts September 1 and goes through November 30. Between December 1 and December 31 of even numbered years, there is an additional late fee attached to the renewal process. In order to renew your registered nurse license, you must have 24 contact hours of continuing education. And you should log that in on the continuing education page of our website. Um, if you attend programs that are provided by a Board of Nursing approved provider, they will report that to the Board of Nursing electronically. You need to verify that your record is accurate but you cannot change programs that have been submitted by a provider. If you complete programs by a national provider or a recognized provider, then you may add those to your course list following the instructions that are posted on those screens. Advanced practice nurses in anesthesia, nurse practitioners, and nurse midwives must report six contact hours of pharmacology continuing education as a part of the total 24. So you need six contact hours of pharmacology CE plus 18 contact hours of other nursing continuing education. Remember that the resources for advanced practice nursing start on the Board of Nursing website under the heading of Laws, you'll find the Practice Act, the Administrative Code, and declaratory rulings applying to nursing practice. On the Advanced Practice page, you'll find questions and answers, applications, and your individual profile. Other sources of information that do apply to advanced practice nursing include the Alabama Department of Public Health, where nurse practitioners and midwives can find the official controlled drug schedules, identifying medications that require a separate controlled drug certificate issued by the Alabama Board of Medical Examiners. You'll also find health care facility regulations for hospitals, nursing homes, end-stage renal dialysis treatment centers, other clinical facilities that must be licensed or certified in the state of Alabama in order to operate and they generally have a section on personnel that may apply to how your position is defined or described in that setting. Nurse practitioners in particular, nurse midwives as well, should go to the Alabama Board of Medical Examiners and review the laws and rules that apply to collaborative practice as it's seen from the physician perspective, as well as the laws and rules affecting controlled substance prescribing and the requirements for obtaining a controlled substance certificate and the controlled substance formulary that applies to each level of certificate. Currently, nurse practitioners and midwives may prescribe schedules three through five under the Controlled Substance Certificate. There is a proposal for regulations to allow certain control Schedule II drugs in the future, so confer with the Alabama Board of Medical Examiners to get that information. <laughs>